Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Brittany Vanderhoof, and I am a graduate student at Rochester Institute of Technology, working with Dr. Jehan Kartaltepec. Um, recently, however, I participated in a fellowship which allowed me to work with Dr. Andreas Feist at IPAC, and today I'm going to share the details of that project where we used Alpine data to investigate the ISM properties and O2 star formation rate relation at the redshift range of 4.5. Um, okay, so jumping right into it, um, this is the plot of star formation history over cosmic time that we see pretty often. Um, it's used frequently to discuss this peak of star formation or galaxy assembly around a redshift of two, where we stu study these gorgeous uh, mature galaxies. It's also used to point out the epoch of reionization and first assembly of galaxies. And the Alpine redshift range corresponds to this redshift of four to six. Uh, right after reionization, where we see a um, rapid increase in star formation up to our peak range. Um, this in itself is a very interesting uh, time to study as this early growth phase can provide key information um, as galaxies transition from primordial into mature galaxies. And the Alpine survey has already advanced our understanding of the gas and dust in this redshift range as well as um, information on structure. Um, however, the lack of optical emission lines has left the analysis of the galaxy's current star formation rate and metal content, um, it's a little bit difficult. And so that is the main motivation of this study. Um, quickly, the uh, ALMA large program to investigate C2 at early times is a 70 hour cycle five ALMA program of 118 spectroscopically confirmed main sequence galaxies that all fall within the good south and cosmos fields. Uh, the takeaway of all of that is that there exists a large range of ancillary data for these galaxies to be used for the study. And it makes it such that Alpine is the first multi-wavelength survey of galaxies at a redshift of four to six, with observational data ranging from the UV to the far IR, um, sans those optical emission lines. And that is where we decided to compile a pilot sample of 10 of these main sequence galaxies at the redshift range of 4.5 with the aim to study both the O2 um, star formation rate relation and the ISM properties uh, via the O2C plus and the O2H alpha emission line ratios. Um, this plot here is our star formation rate versus stellar mass plot, um, just depicting where our pilot samples fall on the main sequence compared to the larger alpine sample, which are the gray dots in the background. Okay, so um, O2 is an optical emission line indicative of current star formation in the galaxy, and thankfully one that can be targeted with Keck for the sample. And we were able to observe that with one of our Alpine galaxies. And so what I'm showing here on the right is the HST image of that galaxy uh, with the original ALMA detection um, overlaid the blue contour lines show the C plus emission and the red contour lines are showing the continuum or the dust. Um, and then in teal is our well-known MOS fire slip position over the center of our galaxy. And I also included the 2D spectra that we observed um, with the beautiful O2 emission line and the extraction window. Uh, I also snuck in this uh, peak at our table for the star formation rate calculations and comparisons that we were able to make with the range of data for this galaxy. Um, however, due to time, I can't go into the details on this, but it will be included in the upcoming paper that we're publishing. Um, the remaining nine galaxies of this pilot sample are narrow, um, the O2 is from narrowband imaging from Morx on Subaru. And a huge thank you to our Alpine collaborators, Dr. Brian Lamo, Lu Shen, Dr. Lori Lubin, Moore, who reached out to us and offered to add their narrowband O2 data from Subaru to supplement this pilot sample. That was really awesome. 
Um, these galaxies come from the surveys that they're part of, and you can look to the literature if you want more details on those and the reduction and all of that. Um, but these galaxies also are in the redshift range of 4.5 and in the Cosmos field, and they provided to us the O2 line flux um, from the narrowband filters and KS band photometry. And again, a little peek at the uh, details of the information they provided along with the star formation rates that we were able to calculate from that. Um, like I said, we discuss, um, include a discussion of the various star formation rate indicators in comparison to galaxies at lower redshifts out well, as well um, in the paper. But the main takeaway that I want you guys to have um, for this talk um, can be seen in this plot. And to go over what's going on here, because it's kind of messy, um, <laughs> we have our star formation rate versus O2 luminosity. And I have plotted the observed O2 luminosity in the solid shapes, and also plotted the intrinsic or dust corrected O2 luminosities as their corresponding open shapes. I separated the spectroscopic sample from our narrow band. Um, by depicting it with the star shape. I thought that was fitting. Um, and also calculated the median of the dust corrected luminosities and that's our purple here. Um, on top of that, uh, we also plotted the O2 to star formation relations from literature. Um, those are in the solid and dashed lines. And both authors point out that this relation depends strongly on metallicity. So we included theoretical um, relations for multiple metallicities as well. The, there's a lot going on here that you can infer, but the biggest um, results are that we find the original Kennecott 98 relation will significantly overestimate the O2 derived star formation rates if applied to the dust corrected O2 luminosities. The QLEO4 relation can provide a much better estimate for the total star formation rate. Um, the large uncertainties uh, in our data points, mainly due to unknown attenuation factors, didn't allow us to distinguish relations for the different metallicities. However, our median value in purple um, suggests that the half solar metallicity is reasonable. Um, additionally, um, once uh, these relations are calibrated better, um, plots like this will allow us to determine the star formation rate from O2 for galaxies with only O2 measurements, which is something to look forward to. Um, the other main takeaway from this study that I really wanted to include in this talk uh, was our modeling of the ISM for these galaxies with Cloudy. Um, Cloudy is a photo ionization simulation code that allows us to model the ISM of galaxies given a range of parameters. And we use this to compare our measured O2 to C plus um, and O2 to H alpha luminosity ratios to those models. Um, so, Again, going through everything that's on here, what I did was run cloudy models for gas clouds with electron densities of 0 0.5 and 2.0, and those are de depicted by the different colors. I also ran it for gas phase metallicities of 10%, 50%, and 100% solar, which are shown in the line styles, and also for a range of ionization parameter from negative 0 0.5 to negative 3.0, in steps of 0.5 dex. Um, the black line is our spectroscopically measured luminosity ratio, and the gray lines are our photometric ratios. Um, for the O2 to H alpha plot, we determined that a median range for the photometric values was better, and that's what the gray box is showing. And now that you got the plots down, the biggest overall um, determination from this is that our galaxies are exhibiting ionization parameters that are lower than negative 2.0. And alongside of that, um, it's suggesting that the um, electron densities are greater than uh, the range of 2.0 here. Okay, so 
that was a lot of information all at once. So it was a quick summary. <laughs> and the big things that I want you to take away from the study that we did, this pilot study, is that the relation between our dust corrected O2 luminosities and the total star formation rate is best described by subsolar metallicity models from Cooley et al. 2004, whereas the Connecticut 98 models um, would overestimate the star formation rate by a factor of three. And also that our luminosity ratio comparison to cloudy models showed that our galaxies have ionization parameters consistent with galaxies at a redshift of 2.3, but slightly higher electron densities. Um, overall, the ISM properties of our redshift 4.5 galaxies are consistent with those at redshift of 2 to 3 when matched by specific star formation rates. Um, Okay, so there is a lot more work to do, but not for this pilot sample as we are finishing up and submitting it for publication very soon. However, we do find that there is a need for a larger statistical sample um, of specifically the spectroscopic O2 so that we can really calibrate that O2 to star formation rate relation at this redshift, as well as constrain um, metal abundancies. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions here or online? So we do have a question here, John. Do you have a Lyman alpha for any of these galaxies and want to comment on that? Um, I don't, uh, not that I considered in my work, I'm not sure if there's Lyman alpha with the greater collaboration. I'm very new to this data set, as I mentioned, it's part of my fellowship. We have a question online from uh, Ryan Sanders. Can you see it, Brittany? Uh, it's the, in a Q and A. Otherwise, yeah, okay. I can see it. Thank you. Can, um, can you read the question? Yeah. Uh, were you able to obtain electron density constraints directly from the O2 doublet ratio for any targets in your spectroscopic sample? Um, so we only had the single spectroscopic um, galaxy, um, and we were not able to resolve the doublet, if that's what you're asking. Hold on, sorry. Um, yeah, so no, we didn't really get any constraints from that directly. We got the constraints mostly from modeling with Cloudy. Okay, any other question? No? All right, let's thank the speaker again.